Okay, from the perspective of HR category in terms of innovative organizations, what the HR can do, HR can actively promote the training and developments of members so that they keep a current. So that means the role of HR in uh, encouraging you know, uh, innovative in the organizations by promoting the trainings, uh, by giving the trainings and developments to the members so that the members, I mean the members referring to the employees so that and employee uh, keep currents, uh, keep uh, to the updated information and so on. So uh, HR also can offer high, uh, high job security so that employees don't fear of getting fired. So if employees uh, if employees believe that their job is not really uh, secure, they tend to uh, ignore from committing uh, mistakes. So this will uh, prevent uh, innovation to take place in the organization. So it is important for HR to offer a high job security so that employees uh, do not feel uh, fear of getting fired for the mistakes that they did. Uh, sometimes mistake is just a, a step to, to achieve something innovative or to, uh, to achieve something um, to, to move toward the discovery of uh, innovative ideas or innovative developments, discovery and so on. Another thing HR can do is to encourage individuals to become champions of change. Uh, this champion of change is like uh, coming up with the new ideas or coming up with the new things that never been uh, uh, developed before. So these idea champions, uh, if actively and enthusiastically promoted, uh, it will build and build support. It could overcome resistance uh, from uh, the employees and make sure that it is implemented. So uh, the ideas, it is important to be implemented. So it is important to encourage uh, employees to, to, to come up with the new ideas to become champions in of change. So they come up with, they, they, uh, they don't afraid to come up with something new, something innovative uh, and uh, to be uh, encouraged to, to champion, uh, to become a champion of change. So this uh, kind of importance, uh, especially when we talk about innovative organizations. So characteristics of learning organizations, uh, learning organizations uh, is uh, these five uh, characteristics of learning organizations. First one is they need to have a shared visions uh, among uh, employees that are all agreed on. So they also uh, people also need to discard new way, new old ways of thinking. Uh, Sometimes these new old ways of thinking uh, didn't uh, bring them uh, anywhere. So it is important to discard or to remove or to uh, get rid of the old way of thinking. And the standard routines, because this actually will uh, prevent uh, learnings or will prevent innovation to take place. Uh, members also need to think of all organization process and really function as a uh, part of system of interrelationship. So if the employees uh, think all organization process activity functions as part of the as, as part of the interrelationship, uh, they are more willing to learn from each other, to communicate uh, from each other and so on. So, uh, another thing is uh, about the characteristics of learning organizations. <coughs> People openly communicate with each other across vertical and horizontal boundaries. So in the organizations, when we talk about her, uh, vertical boundaries, it's from top to bottom. And uh, when we talk about horizontal boundaries, uh, from the same level of the organization, it's like a horizontal level. So vertical level, that's mean either from top to bottom or from bottom to uh, top. So that's the vertical. So if the organization is being based from vertical kind of uh, boundaries is normally um, the organization will become a taller structure, horizontal will become a flatter structure. So uh, people openly communicate with each other across vertical and horizontal without fears of uh, criticism or punishments. So this considered as a, uh, important characteristics of innovation and also learning organizations. Fifth, if uh, people should direct or subliminate their personal self-interest and fragmented departmental uh, interest to work together to achieve the organization 
possession and shared vision. So basically, uh, this uh, fifth point is to uh, emphasize uh, more on uh, teamwork or uh, working together instead of uh, focusing individual self-interest. Uh, so it's here, the fifth point is to work together to achieve the shared uh, organization visions. That's the importance uh, uh, when we talk about learning organization. So what can manager what can manager do to make their organizations uh, firm uh, learning organizations? So first one is to establish a strategy. Of course, uh, in anything, uh, it is important to have a strategy to have a plan. So step first is uh, establish a strategy. Second is to redesign the organizational structure, and third is to reshape the organizational culture. So strategies, uh, it is important to have strategies. Without strategies, um, the organization do not have the guideline do not have the the, the guidance to go they don't have uh, the, the something that direct them to achieve something so it is important to have strategies uh, manager management need to make ex, uh, explicit mean to make it clear about its commitment to change innovations and continuous improvement so they they have to make it clear they have to come up with a strategy to, to encourage or to motivate employees and so on Second is to redesign the organizational structure. So whatever their organizational structure, uh, if they want to become a learning organization, they have to redesign uh, their organizational structure if the original one, the original structure is not uh, working well. So the former structure can be a serious impediments to learning. So uh, the formal one does mean whatever they have at the moment uh, maybe it's not effective so they have to redesign uh, their organization structure but if the formal structure that they have is already good so uh, they can stick with that but normally the formal structure can be a serious impediment because formal structure normally have a very rigid rules and regulations very formalized uh, rule and the uh, and centralized decision making so it can be uh, 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 it can be a pediments, uh, impediments to uh, learning. So flatten the structure. Uh, uh, it is uh, a trend nowadays. Uh, many of the modern organizations to move toward uh, becoming flattened organizations, uh, whereby they are following more organic style instead of a mechanistic style. So flatten the structure means eliminating or combining department instead of they have many hierarchy. Uh, uh, the organizations with the mechanistic style, they will have taller style of organizations where they have many departments, many functions. So in order to uh, redesign organization structure to become flat, they have to eliminate uh, and combine, eliminate some of the department or combine to become a one. So it will becoming uh, the, the structure will become uh, flat. And also to increase the use of, of cross-functional teams. So cross-functional teams uh, do not have uh, many managers. So they uh, that mean the they, the the members from the cross-functional teams may come from main, may come from two or three departments uh, but they work on the ad hoc project after the project finish they go back to their original department so this one actually uh, can help overcome many of the uh, of the uh, functions in the organization and this kind of cross functional team also uh, reinforce interdependence um, between the department uh, and reduce the boundaries so no longer boundaries uh, so this can also improve the structure organization structure and also uh, become uh, the structure become flat because they they, they also reduce the manager uh, that's mean they needs only a few manager not so many managers so they can reduce the the hierarchy level i mean the, the taller level of uh, organization structure Next is to reshape the organization. Uh, sorry, this one organizational structure. Uh, this one, the third one, is to reshape the organizational culture. So here, manager must uh, manager must play the role uh, to demonstrate uh, using uh, through their actions. That mean uh, demonstrate by example. Uh, so they need to take risks and to admit failure. Uh, they shouldn't like. Uh, Try to hide their failure. Instead, it is important to um, to to demonstrate uh, their actions 
that uh, taking risks is okay and meeting failures is uh, are okay. So some uh, mean some employees uh, because they they didn't want to um, to to admit their failure because of getting for for being getting off uh, getting fired. So they they do not want to admit the failure this actually can have a uh, serious consequences because if you lie do not want to admit it will lead to uh, more lies and more lies so it, it's not good for for the ethics and for the uh, organizational environment and culture so reshape organ uh, reshape organizational culture also means rewarding uh, people who take chance and make mistakes so uh, make mistake in performing the job uh, like a first time is okay but many times it's also not good because it's indicating that the employees do not perform well but if uh, committing mistakes uh, to, to, to come up with uh, something new is okay but if doing routine job still committing mistake is not really a good indication of performance so what is meant here rewarding people who take chances and make mistakes is for example those who venture into new area and then they try uh, first uh, they uh, so it's okay to make mistake in that kind of uh, area but if employees doing the routine job but, but, but keep uh, keeping uh, but uh, still keeping doing mistakes so it's considered it's not good so uh, moving to organization, organizational change and stress uh, in the organizations when uh, organization move uh, from their comfort zone to a change there will be some stress uh, may experienced by the employees and the manager so research show that organizational change uh, in, that's incorporating uh, or be knowledge uh, uh, of how people react to stress uh, may yield more effective result than organizational change that uh, only follow um, a goal setting style so here is to indicate that OB knowledge is more important to uh, manage stress uh, than uh, just uh, following uh, objectively or manage uh, ob objectively through goal setting so organizational change is more um, uh, it, it, the, the, the stress that happened because of organizational change can be overcome by incorporates OB knowledge so here the role of leadership is quite uh, critical especially uh, the organization now when they want to introduce change they need to have a transformational style of leadership because this transformational style of leadership could shape uh, employee uh, effects uh, so, uh, so that uh, employees stay committed to the change and do not perceive it as stressful so in order to manage stress in the organization when they, when they introduce change the organization should encourage on having transformational leadership style so change are stressful because employee perceive uh, change uh, to be threatening because of uh, who want to change uh, because sometimes they want to change but because of the uncertain about the outcome uh, because they also do not know uh, that can be uh, threatening to to the status quo to their comfort zone to their current situation so it can lead to stress so um, employee need to see that change as fair is mentioned in the previous slide as this chapter it is important to 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 let the employees know that the change actually uh, need, uh is 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 done in the fair manners uh, is done in the in the uh, in the way that is ethical and in the way that is uh, acceptable um that mean the the, the the employees need to see the the logic of the change that needed to take place and also the process need to be fair so research found that uh, those with positive change orientations before changes are placed are less likely to perceive change as unfair or uh, or threatening so here to indicate that uh, if employees uh, perceive change as positive uh, before the change uh, uh, have taken place so they are less likely to perceive that kind of change as unfair or threatening so they feel less stressed so that's the importance of uh, having positive orientation in terms of uh, perception towards change